I remember the first time landing at SFO. We like, we, from SFO, we took part into the city. Uh, my buddy and I, we got sent immediately. We're like, oh, what should we do? And somebody's like, take this, take this bus, get off at this stop, we're like, great. And they sent us right to the heart of the Castro, uh, which was great. And we were like, oh, okay. Like, I'm from New Hampshire. Like, this is wild, this is great. And then we went up to the hate and we like bought some weed from somebody and sm you know, like got stoned. And I was like, but I remember like the landscape of the Bay Area, like just, it was so different. Yeah. Like, like, it's so different than anywhere I'd been. And I was just like, this is gorgeous. This is awesome. These hills are so cool. Like, how is the ocean right there? That was Mark DeVito, co-owner of Standard Deviant Brewing. I'm Jeff, and this is Storied San Francisco, a podcast all about the artists, activists, and small businesses that make this city so special. I had known Mark somewhat through several mutual friends before we sat down in December to record. This episode, part one of two, is mostly about his life up to the point of moving to San Francisco from Boston. Our conversation turned out to be quite a wild ride, some of which I had to edit out for time. And so, I'll step out of the way and get right to it. Here's Mark. Not blowing smoke up your ass, I'm going to just throw this out there. I was texting a friend about other stuff today. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm going over to Standard Deviant to record a podcast today. Um, he is not so much of a beer drinker. His That's right. partner is, he's more of a bourbon guy, but he's uh -huh. like beer adjacent. Uh -huh. Anyway, I was just like... It's one of my fav new favorite yeah. places. In I'll the take city. that. Yeah. I mean, I was just at Tornado yesterday. Probably my former absolute favorite. Yeah. Um, I kind of live nearby. The story is that I, I went to get my flu vaccine at CVS. It's right there. It's and I right like, across I can't. the street. It is the law that I have to get a beer after that. Right. Yeah. Just like getting tattooed. You have to. Correct. Yeah. So, but, um, yeah, like, uh, over the years, starting with Corey's party, whatever year that was, that was before the pandemic. That was probably 2018? 18. I'm going to say 18. 18. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, uh, definitely through the pandemic and with the chili cook-off, <laughs> boom, sealed it. And so yeah. Aaron, my wife, is not a, absolutely not a beer drinker, mm -hmm. and she likes it here a lot. That's great. So you've, we're, you've, we've done it. You've, you've done, done it. it. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So we're way jumping ahead. Okay. Um, I what I would like to start with, uh, if you can just share with, you know, our listeners, Ooh, yeah, yeah. your story, where you're from, what it was like, maybe growing up in the '80s. Well, since this is a podcast and no one can see me, I'll just let them guess by my voice. Okay, um, but yes, in the '80s, you grew up in the '80s. I was, I, I did. Okay, and I, I was born in 1980. So, um, early 80s, I don't remember much of. Um, I do remember uh, really traumatic instances from childhood. One, shitting my pants uh, mm. in preschool. Mm. And then the following year... I've done the same. No, I peed in my pants in preschool. Oh, I shit my pants. It was like... I, I remember... They're burned. Those I, memories are I, burned. I remember like yeah. the specific like color and texture of <laughs> said shit. It was so traumatic. What, um, what ha like, were you... For me, it was... I was embarrassed to ask... To go to the bathroom? For yeah. Just I, that day. I, I don't remember what led to it. Yeah. I remember the shorts I was wearing. They were Ocean Pacific shorts, and I really liked them, but they were unfortunately they, white. They were. Uh, yeah, yeah. They, they were. No, they, no they, longer. They, they stopped existing that day. Uh, and then I remember a traumatic experience of... Um, horsing around in my first grade classroom and running and jumping over a chair and my sneaker caught like the side of um, a girl's like skirt or whatever and like pants her basically in the middle of the classroom and my teacher just her eyes got so wide big with this look of like what the fuck did you just do what just happened what I felt happened? terrible about it for years still yeah. do yeah that was 36 years ago and I still yeah. feel bad about it yeah yeah. Well, sorry. Uh, you mentioned Whoever you were. <laughs> yeah. She's out there somewhere. Yeah. She's definitely on Facebook. She's definitely listening to this podcast. It definitely listens to the podcast. <laughs> okay. Oh, so growing up. How about not? Yeah. Not, not I, I, lo I love that yeah. you led with trauma. Sure. Yeah. But I mean, also like pretty spoiled if that's my trauma. Right. Um, right. Uh, uh, New Hampshire's a weird place. It's like 
very small. It's one um, of five states I haven't been to. Oh, wow. You got to go. Not on purpose. Like, yeah, I, I, I just you... turned 50, and I wanted to do, like, all 50 by 50. Yeah, yeah. Just whatever. Um, I've peed on every state except for Alaska. Okay. I, sorry, my you, you can't see this on the podcast, but my dog has decided to just sit on the table here. I feel like um, the sound that came through on the mics was obviously a uh, dog's a tail, tail wagging. wagging. Yeah, yeah, good. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so New Hampshire is like a... When I was growing up in the 80s, it was like still under a million people total in the state. Mm -hmm. Um, The town I grew up in does not have a stoplight still to this day. Okay. Like you knew everyone. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Very rural. Mm -hmm. Um, Gorgeous. Warm, nice, beautiful summers. Summers are great. Fucking cold winters. Full of like mosquitoes and black flies in the summer. And then um, the winters are, I, I love winter. I love the snow. I'm a big like snowboarder um an advocate of like snow activities snow activities um mm-hmm. uh but i what i learned in as i got older was i really like to go to the snow and not have the snow like always be around for four months again um, i'm jumping ahead but like your move to northern california yeah s- checks that box oh yeah 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 yes. i didn't even know when i moved here no. that's what i was getting into and it's, no. it's great because the benefits just keep you know, yeah. I've been here oh, yeah. tw- almost a quarter of a century, and like it yeah. keeps it's just, being things. It just is, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, but we're still in we're still New, New Hampshire, Hampshire, and um, you're like barely out of first grade. Where you in a, uh, unintentionally? I thought we weren't going we to talk pants. about the traumatic experiences anymore. <laughs> um, Super small town. Very small town. Like when, I think it's probably up to like four thousand people now. But is it was your like, family still there? My parents still are there in the same same house, house that you in grew, which up, I grew in. up. Yeah. Uh, and my brother, during the pandemic, moved back 15 minutes away from my parents and bought a house and okay, a little plot of land up there. Do you um, only have the one sibling? I do. Okay, just you and your just brother. Just the two of us. And who's Absol- older? He's older. Absolute terrors on our parents. If they'd had one more, I, I think they would have exploded. Yeah. Um, my parents are lovely, very like sane people and they had two of the most insane kids yeah. uh, I, I think about that a lot <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm one of three boys yeah, oh, and yeah. yeah I'm that's, like that's good that's a lot speaking of yeah, yeah. The, the trauma went the other way right I'm sure I caused yeah I'm yeah. sure same with us um, yeah so we grew up there um, everyone knew each other um, you know we were like th- there are people from my small town uh, in New Hampshire who when I first moved to Boston which is a mere like 60 miles away right, right. like it's not that far you mm-hmm. get there in like an hour if you're at night speeding here to um, Sacramento but yeah basically here to Sacramento like mm-hmm. same same distance as that uh, and I remember like coming home on a Sunday to like see my family and I saw one of my buddies and he's like what's Boston like I was like oh living there is great but I was like no no what is it like right I was like what do you mean he's like I've never been Right, and I was like, "You're 23 years old, and it's like an hour away." Right, and he's like, "I've never left the state, and to this day, I don't believe it's he a has. tiny state." I, I believe he still it's has. It's a little left sliver of bacon. It's a tiny state. Yeah. yeah, at least it's the right side up, unlike Vermont, which is. It's not even debatable that that is an upside down state. When you look at the two of them, clearly Vermont's upside down. Right, together they form a rectangle, kind Basically. of. Basically, yeah. But yeah. then it's split the, in the middle the, with, with a sturdy base. Is, is New Hampshire the right yeah, side yeah. up? And and, yeah. and and so, pardon my ignorance. Is New Hampshire the one that kind of has a little bit of coastline? Oh, oh yeah. We've got Vermont like, does not. Vermont's got no coastline, but it has yeah. Lake Champlain. Oh, um, okay. we have like uh, I think it's sixteen miles, sixteen or seventeen miles of coastline in New Hampshire. So, did you live anywhere near that? Everything's like forty-five minutes Super. from yeah. everything. <laughs> yeah. I guess my uh, my larger point is like, did you do? Yes. Ocean stuff. Ocean was huge. Yeah. Water was huge. Yeah. Like. Um, uh, we were fortunate, like, you know, I'm, I'm like, uh, lucky that my parents were able to, like, take vacations that they could take their children on, and those would be to, like, the coast, to Maine, yeah. or, like, to the coast of New Hampshire. We'd rent a house there for a week and, like, go chill at the beach. Is uh, New Hampshire, I mean, you just mentioned Maine, but, like, is it close enough? I, like, I associate, I've never been, mm-hmm. one of the other... I was five, hopeful. One of five, I was like, if you've been to Maine and you didn't stop in New Hampshire, it would be stupid. Podcast over. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I definitely <laughs> associate Maine with lobster. That's it's same. on their license plate. Right. There's is a it, lobster on their license plate. Is it's it a, the same in New place. Hampshire yeah. though? Yeah, Maine, Maine is like 
it, it, Maine has a ton of coastline because mm -hmm. it's like all these little coves and bays. Yeah. So like as it's like actually measured, like yes. it's one of the longer coastlines in the country, which is I've heard of that about that. Yeah. And Acadia National Park. Yep. Is up there. Beautiful. You've been. I guess. Yeah. 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 Um, spent a lot of time in Maine. Spent a lot. I've spent a lot of time everywhere. Um, uh, okay. So we'll, well, we can probably. I think. Get this is, I've got a good idea of small town New yeah. Hampshire. I he keep hearing Boston. Yeah, so was that like so, college or um, yeah, no? I didn't go to college in Boston. However, um, uh, my my grandparents came to the United States from Italy via the north end of Boston. Okay. So um, my dad grew up there. Um, the Devito side. The Devito side. Okay. And. Uh, and there's some other names in there that have like a thousand vowels. Oh. So Devito is like the tame Italian name of ours. Um, okay. Uh, my 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 grandmother was a Sinisuaso. Oh, I like the I like how it sounds. Great, sick name. Uh, we got some Osiellos. We got mainland Italy or uh, like where near about? Naples. Yeah, near Naples. Yeah, near Ooh. Naples. Um, Avellino. Yeah, uh, I like it. Lovely place. Um, do not recommend doing your laundry there at the laundromat. Well, you could do yours. Uh, hmm. My wife and I dropped our laundry, went and had some wine, came back. They were like, here you go. It was all folded up, and we got back to where we were staying. And the colors of most of our clothes were different mm -hmm. than they had been. And all of my wife's underwear was gone. Just gone. Just They just took in it In a vending all. machine somewhere they in Japan. They just took it. They just mm -hmm. took it. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Wild. That's, that's also yeah. the second uh, instance of clothes turning a different color so far in this very young recording. We can. Sorry, I keep can, going back to the trauma. We can, we can get that even more. I've got so many thoughts going through my head about clothes changing. But your color family now. is Starting basically is from your. So this is going back on your dad's side at least. Dad's side. Two generations. You're right, like a second Italy. generation. Yeah. We went. My wife and I were in Italy last summer and like met like one of my cousins who still Fuck. lives there. Who like it was. Really neat. It was a totally. really cool experience to be so like, cool. hey, we're in this small town. I was like, in very broken Italian. My wife speaks better Italian than I do. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and she like did most of the communication. But we asked this guy at like a winery that we had just showed up at, who also is a relative of mine. Uh, and we were like, can we have a tour? And he was like, huh? Like, I'm not, what? And we're like, we'd like a tour. He's like, all right, let's go. And he just walked us through this place. Mm -hmm. And during it, I was like, do you know? And like, asked him the name of my cousin and he was like the veterinarian I was like yeah he's like yeah I know him hold on he called him dude was there in five minutes amazing it was great and like showed up and my wife was like oh you guys are clearly related <laughs> like, but, yeah it was <laughs> obvious yeah, yeah it was pretty cool it was obvious uh, it was pretty I cool, love but, that um, yeah so uh, but anyway, Bo so Boston was Boston. like we went there almost every weekend growing up as a kid like um, my, my dad's sister still lived in the Boston area uh, his parents were there. We'd go down. We'd have like big Italian meals on Sundays mm -hmm. in the north end of Boston, mm -hmm. um, or at one of their homes, and then drive back up to New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. So it was a big part of my life. Um, so when I graduated high school, um, my friends and I decided to go live in Boston. Okay. For a summer. Uh, and if you're born in '80, this is like late '90s. Late '90s. Right? Yeah. Right yep. before the I graduated millennium. High school in '99. Okay. So, you know, we were, we definitely, in, in the year 2000, can I, in the year 2000, I don't know if there's like uh, trademark shit on that, but I had to, I said it, I'm I leaving had to it sing in. it, I'll take personal the, rules, yeah. I'll take the flack. Yeah, yeah, yeah good, yeah. good, well, your, your whole podcast is going down it's because of that. It's just libel and slander <laughs> and copyright infringement yeah. all over the place, yeah. yeah. But we celebrated Y2K. Uh, in um, Boston. In, in, we actually went to New York, but like it, I, I was, was in um, New York. I lived in yeah. New York during. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. It didn't explode, and then nothing happened. Um, what you couldn't <laughs> see because you're listening to this was us getting more beers, which is great. Yeah. Um, who, who was that though? Let's give them a shout out. That's that Peter. Peter. Peter's from Vermont. Oh. So he is an upside downer. He's upside downer. <laughs> yeah. Is that a thing uh, like New Hampshire people <laughs> call Vermonters upside downers? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Love you, Bernie Sanders. <laughs> yeah. But you're upside down. But you're upside down. Sorry, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah I'm Bean, big upside downer over here. Beans is trying to <laughs> meld into my body at the moment. Thank you, Peter. Peter? That's right. Peter. Yeah. Thank you, Peter. That's right. Appreciate it. Um, yeah. Anyway, nice little tangent there. Um, 
So you're uh, in Boston. You, you were you living in Boston and then just visited New York for for yes. Y2K. So, okay. so I went to I went to college in upstate New York in central New York. Um, not Ithaca, close to Ithaca, but not Ithaca. Um, oh, there's a pun. Ithaca is gorgeous. It's gorgeous. There's t-shirts. And everything. It's gorgeous. Um, uh, I went to Ithaca during college. Like went to check it out, and um, there was a music venue near there that was pretty good um, called the Rungovian Embassy. Oh. Where, where I used to play. It was this weird, wild place, but it was lovely. That's also the second time you mentioned playing music. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was in a band for a long time. Okay. Yeah, Guns N' Roses. That. You ever heard of them? Yeah. Um, no. Oh, yeah. They did, like, Sweet Child of Mine, um, Welcome to the Jungle, mm -hmm. like, Use Your Illusion 1 and 2, all sorts of stuff. Um, yeah, just it's just a band. I, know, I was not in Guns yeah. N' Roses. <laughs> oh, got it. That's okay. just a band. I just wanted to know if you knew who they were. I'll put that in the show notes. Yeah, yeah it's, it's an important... You thought you'd be asking the questions. <laughs> um, yeah, I played. Uh, 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 drums were a big part of my life. So um, fun, uh, right? Drums are like, fun. Drums are fun. Um, basically, like at our little tiny school system in Hopkinton, New Hampshire, um, there was a point where I was required to either be in chorus. Or play an instrument. There was like, a, and like I, my singing voice is so bad and was then and mm, still is now. I just went to that, karaoke like, last just, night and just went withdrew. In, yeah, yeah, just went into the choral, the chorus room and was like, "Hey, I'm not gonna do this. Check this out." And sang something like I think like old King Wenceslas or something. And then they were like, "Yeah, you don't have to do chorus, but you have to figure something out." Also, um, know thyself. Yeah, as long exactly. as we know these things about oh, yeah. ourselves. Um, yeah. And. The the decision I made was, oh, I have to play an instrument now. My yeah. parents were like, well, you have to. If you're not doing chorus, you got to do an instrument. Um, I think I kind of had this dream that I would just, just be like snowboarding when everyone else is a chorus, but not what happened. Um, and so to kind of like uh, be a rebellious little, you know, like preteen, mm -hmm. I was like, cool. I have to take an instrument. I'm taking the drums because yeah. those things are loud, loud. right? Yeah. And um, was the pressure coming from your parents, or was it a requirement in like in your there, school district? I, I believe there was a requirement to have some sort of music arts at the school district. I grew up the same yeah. way, and I feel like this uh, for younger listeners, they might be like, what? They don't do that anymore. I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah, it was like you had. The, I that know that a, in general arts. Funding right, and right. education it's, funding, education is like, funding in general, not there. So yeah, it's yeah. Not, so the fact that like yeah. you're required to learn another language, or in, you're required to either sing right. or play an instrument, it's right. like I think that it's, might be a little more of a foreign, foreign idea. To people now, huh? Yeah. yeah, it was like it was literally like the guy who, you know, not my next door neighbor per se, because like. We lived in the middle of the woods, like, but the next house to our house in right. the woods. No fences. Um, rock walls. Mm. Just stone walls everywhere. Mm -hmm. Old, like, you know, King George bullshit. Um, uh, but my, my next door neighbor was the music teacher at the, at the school. And um, you, said, you already said everyone knew each other. So you everyone just, knew each other. So he was my music teacher. Guy. And like, like, but it was cool. But he taught everyone, like, you know, it was like drums, saxophone, flute, trumpet. Piano. Like he knew like how to play I everything a little it. bit. Yeah. Um, and within like three months, basically, he like called my parents. Was like, you got to get this kid into real drum situations yeah. because he has already surpassed what I can teach him. Yes. And I was like in like fifth grade, right? I was like, all right, this is, this is great. So like, started doing the thing, playing the drums, all through like. When did band like when did playing with other people in your own uh, little bands outside of school? So happen? the first yeah the first I was gonna say the first. In school performance, I played the drum set, big deal, uh, mm. with the steel drum band, and we did Under the Sea. Okay. Totally sick. Uh, <laughs> turns out, when I go back and visit now, um, that music teacher still lives in Concord, New Hampshire, smokes a ton of weed. Good. Who knew when he had the, the middle school kids doing steel drums? You know, who knew? Did he who just knew? smell funny? <laughs> he just baked all the time. <laughs> really excellent. good musician. Yes. Um, but so, yeah, so I did that, and then um, in, in high school, um, I went to a, a boarding school for high school, um, uh, which my wife was like forever, like until like she went with me. She's like, "Oh, I thought you meant you got like sent to reform school, like <laughs> like like, your, like military school or whatever." And I was like, "No, no, it was like a like um, the, a prep school. It was a prep school. It was yeah. like um, there was a decision made to go there, um, which I think was great." Um, 
there was a lot more opportunity in my town for me to would have been for me to like really get into mischief and maybe not even finish high school. Yeah. And instead I went the other direction and went to like crime, drugs, what like what oh, kind yeah. of mischief? All of all totally. of the above. Yeah. That, yeah. Like I mean again, small town. Um, every class had about like 75 people in it when we were in first grade. And by the Same. time I got to graduation, maybe like 40 of those people maybe made it all the way through high school. Wow. Um, uh, right. So like it was just, and, and a lot of my friends, like they, they got through it, but like there was a lot of like um, drug use and like uh, just shit that was, they were like, why am I going to school? Yeah. Um, or they'd go like, you know, get a job like working for the the local like gravel guy or something and they're like i can make a bunch of money. yeah so um that so i don't think it's a controversial theory but I, I it just seems obvious to me like it's because there's nothing to do there's no direction like there's nothing right? to do just nothing to there's do nothing we like yeah. like what what we did for parties as, as like teenagers was like we'd go to like a sand pit right and you'd just be at the sand pit and you'd just be Drinking, drinking beers. smoking, and yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, then, which is exactly would get in their what they and drive home, right? Like, fifteen miles in the dark in the woods. And you're like, that's fucking terrifying. New Hampshire is far as the f- crow flies from Texas, but same, like it's, the small town, like yeah, yeah. small town, probably California, like same right, it's all fucking the same. thing. It's all the same shit. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, when I, uh, I went to a boarding school, and at the boarding school, um, there were a lot more arts. Um, really, like, they did a good job of, of providing a lot of stuff there. Um, and so there was, like, a band room uh, that, like, we had to use. With so all like, the instruments, like... Like, we brought, we brought the instruments there, oh, and we okay. set them up, and, like, okay. there was, like, me and some buddies, and there were, like, two other total bands in the whole high school and so we all had keys to this room and we'd like go in there and we like painted the walls with like you know like Jerry Garcia and Bob Marley I was and, just like, about to ask like kind of genres or yo, styles yeah, we, we, played, we played a lot of Grateful Dead okay. covers um, but then we uh, one of the kids that I was playing with ended up going to uh, the Berkeley School of Music oh. for like uh, he was he, it's, I played music with this kid for years and then like our senior year of high school when it was finally like college applications we all learned that he was actually ranked as like the number one cellist in the United States and he like kept it a secret from us because he thought it was like a like we'd make fun of him right but, and we we're like you know that's awesome holy shit that's yeah amazing. um but so he played the bass but like he he went to Berkeley on this like early program of like you're a young musical genius come here even though you're not in college yet and came back was like have you guys heard like Miles Davis, Agartha. Oh, right? yeah. And so we started doing like He got stuff. the exposure. He got all this exposure and, to and brought it back music to that we'd you. never heard. And so we started playing like kind of out there stuff. Um, you know, like I, I had long hair, which is funny because I have no hair. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. I think that's why. You got I it out of the way. Yeah, I, I, got, I got rid of my hair. It, it started falling out when I was in college. Okay. Hilarious stuff. Yeah. Uh, really, like when you're really coming into your own and like trying to develop like security as a human, <laughs> uh, having male pal- pattern baldness like yeah. 19 is <laughs> a great way to do it. So, um, so yeah, we started playing like, you know, just we, we moved from just playing like Grateful Dead and Allman Brothers covers, covers. to like then um, playing more like um, some like weird Miles Davis stuff, like messing around in different time signatures. You can't uh, really cover. You can't really cover it, but it was jazz. It's doing that. inspired, and like, yeah, and like, adjacent, or yeah, something. yeah. And yeah. we like played like you know like some Stevie Wonder songs Ooh, and like fun. did some kind of cool stuff, um, which was fun. And you're still playing drums. I still play the drums once a month. Um, but yes, yeah, so I, I, I meant at the time. Oh, then yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. were you're, oh, yeah. you're the yeah. drummer. I was the drummer. Yeah, um, and uh, and so that happened. And then like you know we all went off to college, and um, I joined a band, like just kind of started a band in college in upstate um, New York. And we played a bunch of, like, we actually, like, went and went and played. Like, there were three bars in the town where I went to school. And, like, one of them had a bowling alley, a pizza place, and, uh, like, a music, little Stage. music room in the bar. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And we would play there every week, and we get paid, like, 50 bucks to play yeah, there. That's a big deal. Um, oh, I hope my parents listen to this, because it's funny, because I bought a car that they assumed I bought with the money... I made from playing shows at this bar all the time, but actually I was selling pot. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, 
and and <laughs> traded traded somebody for a two door Jeep. Traded him a half ounce of weed, uh, and he gave me the car. <laughs> This is just the beginning of your <laughs> entrepreneurial. That's right, exactly. Journey, exactly, is, totally. Yeah, that's yeah. what that is what I'm um, hearing. But so, uh, yeah, so it was like just like the the kids I was playing with in college. Um, we all, when we finished college, we moved to Boston to pursue being that band. Yeah. Um, we had like gotten to the point where, when we were seniors in college, we were playing shows at other colleges and like in New York City and in Boston and like. Um, it was neat. And we're like, we can do this. What so, was the band called? Uh, that band was called Great American. Uh, and then the dude... Like, were you I, doing originals yet? Or oh, yeah. Still, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. All, okay. All, all, like, we would... We, we had, like, we put out, like, a full album or two oh, and, yeah. like, um, of original music. Uh, we would go and play, like... We got paid so much money as that band, like, as far as bands go, because we were, like, we also would, could do covers, so we'd play, like, every Irish pub on, like, Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Yes. We'd go and do four nights in a row where, like, you'd play for three hours. Yeah. We had to play, like, multiple sets for three hours. I was going to say intermission, um, yeah. And, like, we had to pepper in, like, a bunch of covers, because people sure. wanted to hear that at these bars. Yeah. Um, and you wanted to like get them to like you in that way, and also like that's just a lot of material. Yeah. Um, but they'd pay us like four or five hundred dollars a show. And you're like a is, four piece. Yeah, three piece, four piece, four piece at that point, which is like unheard of for bands Correct. to be paid that much money. Like that's thirty three dollars an hour. Oh, so that's more than I make right now. You should own a small like, business. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> did you think though? What, what I'm wondering is, did you think for a minute that this might that music might be what you did 100 percent. that yeah. was that was the plan that was the dream that for was how goal. many years so roughly we i'll backtrack a little bit to that while i was in college um two of my friends and i when the school year ended we hopped in a car and drove to california yes to, to, it lived in Road berkeley trip. for a summer and that's what lived I was like, in berkeley lived in berkeley for the whole summer um like in I, a co-op or something like with, yeah we lived or with in friends a, or we lived in um we found like a garage above a frat house and like i think it was like like we each paid like 300 bucks each or something for the entire summer to live in this thing this is great was this your first tr time in california yeah what did yeah, you yeah. think? It was yeah. I loved it. I yeah. immediately loved it. I was like, yes, this place. Like, like, uh, what was it? Uh, everything. It was like, um, you know, I guess I'd been to Cal. So, so I, I came here a few weeks before we drove out here. Um, my buddy and I flew out to try and find jobs, which is really funny to think about. Like, me now knowing what I know versus me then, like. We like told our parents like we're gonna go get our summer jobs lined up, and flew out and like I went to restaurants. Was like, yeah, I'm, I'll be here in like a month. Can I get a job? And they're like, you're what? what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. Like, and I was, was like, this cool. Bay Area? Yeah, yeah this is okay. in Berkeley. This is in Berkeley, okay. right? Okay. Um, uh, so that was just funny. But anyway, so like I I, re I remember the first time landing um, at SFO. Um, we like we from SFO we took part into the city. Um, uh, my buddy and I, we got sent immediately. We're like, oh, what should we do? And somebody's like, take this, take this bus, get off at this stop. We're like, great. And they sent us right to the heart of the Castro, uh, which was great. And we were like, oh, okay. Like, I'm from New Hampshire. Like, this is wild. This is great. Um, yeah. And then we went up to the hate and we like bought some weed from somebody and, mm -hmm. sm you know, like got stoned. And I was like, but I remember like um, the landscape. Mm -hmm of the Bay Area, mm -hmm. like just, it was so different. Yep. Like, like, it's so different than anywhere I'd been. And I was just like, this is gorgeous. This is awesome. These hills are so cool. Like, how is the ocean right there? And we're, you know, like all the things. None of it makes um, sense. And but... like, there was diversity. Yeah. And I was like, this is so cool. Look at this. Like, this is, this is great. Um, so uh, so right away there was no pause. You're just like, I was like I want to. I called my dad. And I was like awesome. this place is great. Yeah. Like you said I'd hate it, and he's like, well, I just didn't want you to move there too early. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was like, remember when I was like, should I apply to schools in California? And he was the like, no, no, you'd, uh, you'd hate it. Reverse um, psychology. Yeah. 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 Uh, but um, but yeah. So like when we we finished college and moved to Boston, I wanted to move to San Francisco, um, and one of the dudes in the band was like, had a very logical argument that we should go to Boston because we had already been playing shows there. Established, um, kind of. Yeah. It's close to New York, yeah. and like 99% of our college alumni moved to Boston, New York, and like we had a built-in fan base. 
Um, so we did that. And then uh, a year later, he quit the band. Mm. He's like, all right, cool, that was fun. Um, I'm actually going to go to med school. That was my plan the whole time. And we're like, oh. huh? And so I was like, well, fuck you. And also, now we're moving to San Francisco. Boom. And, um, and that was the and my premise bandmates. of the road trip? or Yeah, and my bandmates were like, let's do it. Let's, we're in. One what? of them had never been to California. He's like, I just trust you. You've talked about that place yeah. for years. About being, I was like, great. And we packed up and we drove out. You were the brochure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The pamphlet. Um, what year-ish? 2004. Specifically. Not even ish. 2004. That's, that's, yeah, that's yeah. the one. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, and so we came out here and we, we started uh, when when the dude quit Great American. We like started the three of us started playing like different music, um, which is way better. Uh, mm. We got paid like nothing ever, mm. but it was much better music. <laughs> and, like that's how things. Uh, work. And we came out here and we ended up, um, uh, you know sort of being like well if we live in California and our families are all on the east coast we should go see them a lot and we should tour there to do it and we should still see our friends and so we spent like from like 2006 to 2000 and 2005 to 2010 um, on average probably spent like five months a year on the road awesome um, some years were bigger than others like yeah we did like a couple like three month long tours yeah just living out of a van driving yeah. around the country yep. hence why I've peed on all the states um, <laughs> all right that'll do know. it um, in my experience I, I, I played a little bit of music kind of like punk, punk emo yeah. stuff yeah playing shows is the number one touring is a close second yeah would you agree with that um, like the actual shows, hmm. whether they're in your hometown or wherever, like the, the thrill and the adrenaline of a show. But then, tour, like touring, I feel like the reason it's second is because it's not all good. Well, that's that, I was but gonna, it's a lot of good. I was gonna say that's the funny part about like is like I'm just like is the show actually the highlight? Because a lot of shows played, are good. Too. We played <laughs> so many shows. Like we would we would show up places on like a Sunday night, and like this is like I I booked all of our shows. Um, and like you know we had the internet it's not that long ago but it wasn't like like we still we didn't have smartphones um, Correct. there was no Spotify we had email there was no Facebook there yeah. was none of that yeah, um, yeah. we had email and I would email these places and be like and I would physically mail them like show posters and yep. CDs and all the shit yep yep and um and we'd get there we'd get to like you know like we're in like you know Asheville uh, we're in like, you know, or somewhere, and like we would show up, and they'd be like, "Oh, we forgot to put a local band on the bill. No one's gonna be here tonight." Right. And we would literally play to like a sound person and a bartender. Yeah. And it was like, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I guess that was worth it. I don't know, but like, but but the the shows that like, um, there were also shows where like members of the band, not me, so you can guess it was the other two, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, have been fighting in the van on the way. Oh, like, good. So, like, we're on stage, and it's so tense, and you're like, I don't know about this show. Yeah. Uh, we also played that some, might come across to the audience. Yeah, we played somebody's yeah. wedding once that hired us, and, okay. like, was like, we want you to play your original songs. We love it. You're our favorite band. We're like, are you sure about that? Yeah. Like, our stuff's kind of, like, screamy and dark, and, like, oh, um, and they were like, yeah, we love it. And like, we got to the wedding and it rained. So everything had to be moved into this like pavilion. Uh, and it was clear the two families like knew each other and did not like each other. Oh my God. Uh, and, then we, and then we started playing and people were like, what is wrong with you? This is like depressing. Like what? And we're just like, uh, so that was awkward. Um, Where was that? That was in New York state actually. That was like near Syracuse, New York. Okay. Yeah. Um, Amazing. Very strange. Uh, okay, let's go back to Berkeley. Yeah. What, was that the like mo you moving here and not turning back? That was back? the summer. So that was the, I spent the summer here. I went back, finished college, ah. um, and then moving here was after spending some time in Boston. Was it not even a question after your time here I'm and finishing? You're just like, that's where I'm going. I was like, that's it. That's the best place. Did you come? You came. You came with your band member. Yeah. Your band mates. Yeah. yeah. And okay. our buddy Adam, who like. Um, I didn't know very well, uh, but he emailed our band through our band website and was like, hey, I heard you guys are moving to California. Um, can I come with you? <laughs> We're like, sure. Some people might not really. I, I relate. <laughs> this could be my life. Anyway. It was great. Yeah, it's I just, it's just how things... Up. 
shit just happened. Yeah, I picked like him that. up at his, his mom's house. Yeah. And we like started driving cross country and like 45 minutes into the drive, we like, we're like, we don't know each other at all, do we? Like, cause we were like trying to make small talk and we're like, wow, we don't do it. And it was great. We're like absolutely dear friends still to this day. Right. Lots but, of like, time to get to know each other. But it was other. great. We're like, all right, like, sure. You can, you can move to California with us as a band. Sure. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, when, it was like, so, it was, so when you did the move, yeah. did you go to Berkeley again or? Straight to San Francisco. Okay. Um, and this is 2004. 2004. Um, Where? The mission. Craigslist or um, friends or I walked strangers? Ar- I walked around the mission. Yeah. Looking and calling, like writing down numbers. Didn't have mm-hmm. a cell phone. Mm-hmm. It's like writing down the phone numbers and then going to a phone and calling. Yep. And was like outside of my apartment where I still live to this day. Yes. Uh, and this dude like poked his head out the window when like he heard us like talking and like seeing the for rent sign in the window. Poked his head out the window. Was like, oh, do you guys want to see the place? That was Mark DeVito, co-owner of Standard Deviant Brewing. Check back next week for part two with Mark, which drops next Tuesday wherever you get podcasts. Music for Storied San Francisco was produced, performed, and curated by Otis McDonald. Aaron Lim of Bitch Talk Podcast is our contributing producer. And the show is produced and hosted by me, Jeff Hunt. Now in our sixth season, we have more than 200 episodes available on our website, storiedsf.com, or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you're able to, please rate and review the show, and drop us a line at storiedsf at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Keep rejecting those silly doom loop narratives about our city. Stay wacky, weird, healthy, and creative. And we'll see you next time on Storied San Francisco. We acknowledge and respect the first humans of the unceded land we call San Francisco, the Ramaito Shaloni. We condemn the genocide of these and other tribes across the Western Hemisphere. We honor their legacy and history, and we support rematriation and sovereignty efforts. This podcast is a proud member of the BFF.FM podcast network. Learn more at podcasts.bff.fm. BFF.fm, best frequencies forever.